A typical virus has a covering made of proteins which is called the protein coat or capsid. This capsid is made up of small subunits called capsomeres. These capsomeres can be arranged in various three-dimensional geometric forms. Let's check them out. In this one, you can see that it has many flat faces. This type of shape is called a polyhedral shape. Viruses can also be helical in shape. And sometimes they can even have other complex shapes. If you break open the capsid, you will see the genetic material that is the actual infectious part of the virus. Now, when I say genetic material, you would assume DNA. Since you have studied that DNA is the genetic material found in most of the living organisms. But viruses are different. While some viruses do use DNA as their genetic material, there are others that use RNA, a different type of molecule which is very similar to DNA. Both DNA and RNA belong to a category of molecules called nucleic acids. They are made of long chains. A nucleic acid molecule can have one chain or strand which is called single-stranded or it can be made of two strands which is called double-stranded. Let's see which virus has which type of nucleic acid. Viruses that infect plants generally have single-stranded RNA. Viruses that infect animals on the other hand generally have single-stranded RNA, double-stranded RNA or double-stranded DNA. So, summing up, all viruses have a nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA, which is the genetic material and a protein coat. So, we can also say that viruses are nucleoproteins. Don't you think this nucleoprotein structure is much simpler than the structural and functional unit of life? the cell? Since viruses do not show the features of a typical cell, we call them acellular. Being acellular, viruses need to infect another living cell for their growth and survival. We call this infected living cell the host cell. When the virus is outside its host cell, it is completely inert, like an inanimate object. This is why we can't call it living. But we can't call it non-living either. Because it can reproduce and multiply when it is inside a host cell. And since viruses are neither living nor non-living, they did not find a place in Whitaker's Five Kingdom classification. But they couldn't care any less. Viruses never really found the need to become independent living beings. They simply get the host cell to do their bidding. When they bind to the host cell, they inject their genetic material. The genetic material hijacks the machinery of the host cell, forcing the cell to make several copies of the virus. Since viruses are completely dependent on a host cell, we say that viruses are obligate parasites. And as you saw, this host cell could be a human cell, a plant cell or an animal cell. If you enjoyed watching this video and want to learn more in a visually stunning way, download Akash Baiju's app now. Link is in the description and to keep watching such cool content, like, share and subscribe to Akash Baiju's Neat.